Hello, what's up guys? Welcome back to Let Supreme Goes the Black Parade. We're up to mission six, kept away from view. But as usual, before that, we are gonna take a quick revisit back to the brand, to the very, very end. I have a quick save here. Because Marble Man pointed out something in the chat that I really appreciate. Now we're on the balcony of the Blackwind residence, and Mr. Blackwind has Builder, disappeared. Grant me the courage not to So this is after I've been to Howtree Manor. This will not happen until then. And the captain of the guard has taken his place. Now you might remember he is the one who didn't address the lady <coughs> properly. And Mr. Blackwind said he was going to cut out his tongue. And because of that, he's mute. He doesn't Who's say anything. Who's causing this kerfuffle? Ah, filthy brigand. Guards. So that's a nice piece of con Guardsmen. continuity there. A lady there. taker is stalking me. I guess technically you can make noise. You still have voice or vocal cords, even right though you don't have a tongue, sun. but I guess that was the point they were trying to make. What's anyway. going on here? So where is Sir that Blackwood, was then? Slightly thrilling. Well, he said he was going to throw himself out of a window, right? <sighs> and that's what he's done. He's down here on the scaffolding, dead. So he's killed himself, and the captain of the guard has taken his place. That is quite the story. Um... So I think this is super cool because, first of all, it's not something that you'll necessarily notice because when you come back, you've probably done everything in town that you can. And second, uh, you won't find him unless you ghosted or unless you just haven't blackjacked them. If you do, of course, he won't be down here. So if there's anything else that you guys know of, whether it's from a mission hey, maker or... what was that? Just uh, you players, please let Nothing me know. No. I will address it if I have, if I see it before the next recording. Now we are of course going to load up the end stat and save, and then we're going to watch two videos before we get into kept away from view. The boss is displeased with you, but sends his regards nonetheless. Ever since I touched that hideous, accursed statuette, I've been witnessing things I've never seen before, and it makes my skin crawl. Ethereal gliding glows appear and vanish. Statues whisper, and strange hooded figures observe people from afar, and walk in crowds where not a bloody soul notices them. I feel like my body and mind are playing tricks on me. These guys aren't phantoms, they're flesh and bone and yet nobody seems to acknowledge their existence. I've been carefully watching these people for a few days, and they all appear to go to the same place, deep into the bowels of the city. They must have some sort of underground lair or something akin to that. I've even seen some of them walk through solid walls with strange glimmering symbols on them that again, nobody seems to even see. What's interesting is that most of these guys carry books, 
large ones at that, too. Could they perhaps be linked to the necromancers I found in the derelict Howtree Manor? Is this the gift this damn statuette talked about? I intend to know the truth. Today. My apartment window gives me a good view on the streets, and it just so happens that one of these hooded blokes is walking by. Following his trail will hopefully lead me to their meeting point. And if they are linked to the necromancers, perhaps I can find some useful information on how to get rid of that curse. That is, if I can trail him unnoticed while avoiding the local watchdogs. These guys are on edge because of a sudden increase in burglaries in the district, no doubt perpetrated by the famous Downwind Thieves Guild. My ghoulish attire will bring me trouble if I'm seen, even during the day. But there's a storm coming, and the foggy streets of the industrial district are mostly deserted, so I shouldn't have too much trouble if I'm careful. I have no idea what I'm going to find by following this guy, but it's certainly better than staying here and waiting for a painful death. All right. So on Expert, we have to discover the hideout of those or these hooded figures. The one you've just spotted might be your best chance. While your hunting uh, prowess will aid you best in tracking the hooded figure, don't forget that you are a thief first and foremost. Fill your pockets with at least 1,600 worth of valuables. Killing people is unnecessary and brings unwanted attention. Don't do it. Return to your rented apartment when you are done. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say too much about my opinions about this mission right now. Um, I was a little bit unsure after my first playthrough. I know that a lot of people in the forums loved it. And many even had this as their number one or at least in the top three of the whole campaign. Um, I don't share that view, and uh, I'll, I'll give my sort of pros and cons and reasons as we go along. There are certainly things I love about this mission, uh, a lot, So, uh, but I'll get to the details later on. Uh, this mission can be perfect Supreme Ghosted, so that we hopefully will be able to do here. Um, and there aren't really any kind of major areas. Um, there's, there's tight patrols pretty much everywhere, but there's quite a bit of shade, so we should be able to wait out patrollers without needing to do anything out of the ordinary. Let's see. <clears throat> so, no need, of course, to buy anything and... We do have one rope arrow, which isn't a lot of, obviously, but we'd only need one. And there are no tips or readables or anything like that. Let's make a real save right away here. There. And let's look at the map. So right now, this is the only map we have. We will get two other pages later on. We start in the far west. Our rented apartment is here in this building. There's a couple of other rooms we can get into in that area, but not much. Uh, there is a canal here, but that isn't very significant, but it does sort of separate the far west from the rest of the city. And then there are a few places that are mentioned here. Lord Porter's estate and the Priory. You can't really get into those at all. You can go in underneath the estate and get into part of the balcony here. Um, there's a pub that you cannot get into. There's a church here that you can visit. And there's quite an extensive underground network of um, sewer uh, watch stations, things like that. For example, under the factory, it, it's connecting to the sewer system. It goes kind of like a, a three-pronged area. The factory here looks massive. Unfortunately, you can't get into too much of that only a few rooms. There are a couple of areas in the southeast that you also can access. And there is a manor, demo van manor, right here. That one we can access, but that isn't too big. And there's some under or, uh, underpasses and things like that that can take us through these buildings. So we're now in lower Suchime. And like I said, we're get, we'll get additional pages to our map later. We 
head out the window here, we can actually see the keeper that we're supposed to follow. Now, you don't need to follow him. When he sort of hears you, he speeds up a little bit. <coughs> I don't have time for this. I'll find my own way to your hideout. I think that's kind of cool. So even though it is um, sort of a following objective, all you really need to do is discover the hideout. So you don't need to follow him to do so. So he will end up in uh, the hideout. But um, what we're going to do, plenty of things above ground before we end up finding that. So there's no point really in following him. Actually, I'm going to actually mantle up here right away. <sighs> I think that meant he saw us. I don't think he gives any kind of alerts. <sighs> no, but he speeds up a little bit when he sees you. Or if he sees you, so. And he is a keeper, so he goes slightly transparent. When he spotted you, but we're gonna head up here. <sighs> the ledge and open this window. <sighs> so we've now uh, jumped across here, so we're in this building. Alright, so this is a little bit of a mysterious place. It's a water arrow. There's a flash bomb, and then there's a readable under the door. There's no loot in here. You move with such alacrity, sir. And alacrity, I actually had to look up, and that's sort of um, an eagerness and willingness to um, be ready to do work, I guess, or complete some kind of task. I sit down to pen applause for your victory over that petty judge, pretty judge, and I receive confirmation that the same man pulled the Sarnoth job. How might one use such a fact? I wonder whether a vacancy in the leadership of my Hightown ring should open up sooner than I planned. Or perhaps this information will be helpful to fellows of a more litigious, uh, litigious disposition than myself. Your appetite for perilous solo jobs is apparent. I'll bear no ill will should you rebuff this gracious offer. But when it's my territory, I get a cut either way. Pull another gem heist, and I will not be paying for a measly fragment. You will offer me one freely and whole. Ramirez. So I am wondering if this actually is Garrett's apartment. Because I do think I remember from Thief Gold wasn't the reason why we had an assassination attempt on us that we didn't want to be recruited by uh, certain wardens. It wasn't mentioned who it was at that point because we realized that it was Ramirez uh, in that mission. But could this be one of the correspondence off offers from Ramirez to Garrett? We are, of course, because we are obviously now earlier in the timeline than the events of the Dark Project. So that assassination attempt would come later on in the story. So I don't know. Um, it seems likely that this could be it. Because there's obviously thieves' uh, equipment here as well. <sighs> but there is no loot. Alrighty. We're gonna head over here. So now we are technically in the Hammer Priory. And this is the only part of that building that we can get to. There's a gold goblet here. There's nothing here as well. Let's see. So this is Demovan Manor. We're going to head over there first, actually. <sighs> Huh? 
think anyone comes out here. It's a readable here. The Excellent Gazette. Oh, yay. Bringing the truth since 827. Please respond. Mass case of dysentery. Our nostrils are assaulted while our city's beauty is corrupt. Many cases of people vomiting and defecating in the streets are reported. The gossiping fishwives are talking about people drinking from the rivers. But the Excellent Gazette knows for a fact that this is all a Rebodian conspiracy to stain our city. Rebodian pigs go home. The war against Blackbrook continues. The Baron's wrath for the Duke of Blackbrook and his disgusting cronies. The city council has decided to continue the assault against the rotten Duke. Don't listen to, ca to Cravens and run to the closet gar closest garrison. Now is the perfect time to show your patriotism for our noble city. Brutality against our aristocracy. It is with shocking stupor that the excellent Gazette learned the fate of Lady Marigold. Violent maniacs threw her into the sea while she was strolling through the docks. The excellent Gazette wishes to express its sympathy to our noble friend. Don't let our highborn families be terrorized by street scum. Okay. Before we head into that manor, we're going to visit up here a little bit. There's another sort of hidden apartment, if you will. There's some food on the table. Uh, let's see. In here, there is a bottle of wine, and then there is a lever that reveals a ring in sort of a a hidden compartment under the floor. Uh, there's also a moss arrow here. That's it. <sighs> Out, but nobody hears that. Let's see. Who's there? What was that? I just want to see where people are here. Okay. What was that noise? What was that noise? Mm -hmm. Here is a statue. There's a statues up here. Another one, very well hidden one up there. Is someone there? Oh. There, we gotta wait for him a little bit. Just a second. Let's try to go a little faster. Okay, read this one. Let's see, we can actually jump up here. There's kind of a weird layout on this. See, there's a balcony there, and he's going to go back out the balcony. Mm 
Grab that vase, and then we're gonna head out the balcony too. We just need to wait for him to come back in. I like this building. This is a, a small building, but it's got a very strange layout. Almost abstract. Now here, we've got to be a little bit careful because there is a guard that patrols in the distance. We can get a good view of them. fog and the rain-filled city. Here we come back into this hallway. Don't need to go there. Yeah. So he saw us. goblet and a bottle of wine. So we've now moved around this manor sort of in a counterclockwise fashion, so we're now on the northern balcony. And we should be pretty safe here. There's no way here. Then we can move into this room, which is the coolest room in the whole manor. The sounds of the rain is just fantastic. There's a silver candlestick, total 275, and there's a readable. Dearest Herbert, I must thank you for all the kind missives you sent me during my little trip to Bonn. Sending them must not have been an easy task. I hope you weren't found. Bonn, indeed, is an exquisite the most refined city, much more attractive than welcoming than the city, and it's soot, soot everywhere. I really could see myself living there with you, of course. Bonn is the city of art and lovers for a reason. The buildings there are white and gray, topped by complex spires and beautiful domes, decorated with particularly intricate architectural pieces. You'd be very fond of them, and ooze with an undoubtable charm and a certain sense of m modernity which is why it doesn't really surprise me the Baron has been trying to get Bonian architects to work on his dayport renovation project. I could hear merry music in most of the streets I crossed, and the beauty of Bonn at night truly is breathtaking, especially when you are on High Bridge, under a light nightly breeze, and look at the council chambers, caressed by the moonlight while merchant ships cross the river. Oh, Herbert, let's give up our life in this wretched city and start a new one there. I have been back to the city only for two days and I can barely stand it already. Your loving Clements. Okay. Alright. Now here is the balcony that we saw across from the Priory. Can't read this. And down here is a door that is not pickable or unlocked. There's a key for it, and I'll show you that a little bit later. This open window. Actually takes us back to to our apartment. I'm not going to go in there. We're going to go through here. Or not our apartment, but our apartment complex, I should say. And in this first room, there are two stacks of copper coins up here. Can't go up there. Alright, the guard... ...that we saw from a distance actually... ...comes out here. Here's a section of sort of um, built up gardens, and this would be then actually on the west side of the canal in this area. Doesn't look like that's impossible to go to, but it is. 
And the guard comes up here and stations himself here. Uh, let's see. There we go. Here's what looks like an astrologer. Here's a door that is locked and not pickable. This takes you back into the basement of the building. Here's the canal. Alright, let's read this. The City Tribune, 916.33. Bloodshed in Suchheim Heights. A street skirmish erupted last morning's day at, L at Lidecker Avenue, Suchheim Heights. As two bands of rogues clashed in what the Baron's police refers to as a territorial dispute. The commotion was quickly put to a stop by Captain Gosbert and his stout men, who managed to capture most of those involved. No civilians were injured. Um, I, I'm sure this, that there's no reference in this expression, territorial dispute, but whenever I hear that expressed, uh, I cannot avoid thinking of the movie Falling Down with Michael Douglas from the 90s. Uh, which is one of my... I usually don't plug movies on this channel, but it's one of my all-time favorite movies. It's probably one of the most underrated movies um, I've ever seen, and I think one of Michael Douglas' best performances. And there's a scene in that movie where he uses that expression, and it's just a hilarious scene altogether. Anyway, if you haven't seen it, go see it. Uh, the apprehended criminals, uh, all of whom are soon to be executed, have been identified as members of the Downwind Thieves Guild. As of yet, it is unclear who the members of the other party were, but the most honorable under Commissioner De Naven has assured the Tribune um, that scum shall not escape justice. They were lucky to get away this time, but they better not show their faces in Suchheim ever again. War on page 8. Still no bonfires at the last bonfire festival. The streets of Highwatch are full of activity these days as preparations for the annual last bonfire festival continue, with streets being cleaned and groomed. Nevertheless, as citizens eagerly await the return to the tradition, Messer Rind has declared once again that no bonfire shall be allowed. We all remember the Great Fire of 782. Although the chances of flaming spiraling out of our control are slim these days, due to all the precautions introduced in light thereof, I cannot in good faith authorize the burning of large stakes within the borough's limits. The festival promises to be full of excitement regardless, uh, and host guests from neighboring cities. For now, the citizens and your dear editor shall wait in the hope that bonfires return next year. More on page 12. Okay. So we go up here. This is the door that we could have taken from the balcony in instead. This door is open. Alright, this actually goes back to our apartment, so this is where we're going to end the mission, this is where we started. There's not much in here. Let's see. So we can go all the way down here, there's a broadhead arrow. out here hmm. at the very, very end of the mission. So now we're basically back in the streets. So we've covered these few buildings here. We are going to take a look at one more area, our level of demo vent manor. But before that, let's move... Let's see here. 
So now we are coming out here. So we've moved south now. And, um, okay, good. There is an archer here, and on multiple occasions, he was stationed in the middle of the staircase that he just walked up. <coughs> Actually, the first two times I played. So I thought that he was supposed to be stationed there. But then when I prepped for this recording, I realized that he was supposed to be patrol. <coughs> That's interesting. There's another patroller here, too. So we're not going to go down here and through this area. I love this part of town. It's just great industrial... Let's move through here as a sleeper. <coughs> Bottle of wine here, and a readable. 249 damn coins. That's where you're making me pay with paperwork when you lock up half the locals like that. The fact that the Burgomaster fears for his reputation and asks for more drastic measures so we can end the downwinders is one thing. But putting some random quitum in cell in a cell at the slightest suspicion? Did you know that, in addition to parchments that cost an arm, I also have the privilege of hearing all these pompous little bourgeois complain about your inquiries slowing down their trade? I hereby propose this non-negotiable alternative. Get rid only of the beggars by throwing them on the side of the, of the gate, on the other side of the gate. Someone resists? Beat them and throw them in the canal leading to Fitzwick's Hollow. Thieves blot dog's bodies will be more than happy to fill their paperwork in our stead. Anyhow, from now on I will deduct my paperwork from your pay, Commissioner Frontkins. Alright, there is a moss arrow in there. really just came here for the for the loot. So yeah, it's pretty difficult. Oh. There's another guard here. Pretty difficult to go down here. You can, but I'm going to avoid that. Take a different route. in here. Now, you can, of course, continue and go around. You can go under the alley. There's two loaves of bread here and food or fod, two coin. And that'll take you out to um, Lord Porter's Plaza in this area. I'm going to show you this level. <sighs> this is the bottom level of demo vents. Down here there's absolutely nothing. Just the library. And up here <gasps> you can mantle up. That balcony there is the f level that we entered via. You come into a room that really doesn't have any purpose. Besides providing you the key for the manor, you can open this door. This is the door that we saw the other side of. That just ties everything together. However, if we go in here, we can find our, the last room. <sighs> access to a level below. That takes you out to Lord Porter's estate uh, or the plaza in this corner. So I don't think this gate can be opened from the outside. No, I didn't want to do that. But from here, you can actually go down 
to the sewer station or public workstation. And the sewers in this mission is among the most intricate and complicated layout I've ever seen. So I want to try to show you guys all the different ways you can take. So now we come out in a little bit of an unusual location. Sort of a pour out section into the spider infested level. There's two spiders here. Go up here. You can find a water arrow. Didn't want to do that. You can go here. There's a door. Uh, we're not going to take that. We're going to come out there later. Okay. Let's see. Here, this we can pick, but I want to avoid picking locks unnecessarily, as you guys know. This takes us out to the canal right below um, the sort of sectioned garden close to our rented apartment. There's 164. There's some numbers to give you reference points. Go down here. Here's a moss arrow. If you go down here... <coughs> two broaded arrows. And here is a... INTRUDER! Brother Ernest, thy application for transfer to St. Tenor's Priory has been rejected. Father Philistus does not consider thee a good enough candidate to join our ranks. The reason for thy rejection is, dost uh, not possess the skills to properly copy manuscripts. Thou art free to submit a new application in two years. May the Master Builder bless thee in thy endeavors. Brother Katzenjammer of St. Tenor's Priory. Didst thou Notice see that too? Anything? And the word went before him on a breeze carrying our salvation. Here Can't at last, the man with the mind of a general and the heart of a poet, yet also with the hands of a builder, he will lift us up from the earth. Don't think they will come in here. Back here you have Ooh. a healing fruit. Didst thou see someone over there? Three readables and disruption bomb. It is intolerable that we are forced to share in labor with plebeian workers. Be it by the wishes of the master builder that we are assigned to the most miserable of our manufactories, but the infidelity of these common folk is born out of their shoddy work. Best to keep ourselves to the foundry, as Brother Vindus devised, neither our pious toil nor the quality thereof shall be tarnished by unbelief. Come the first review of output, our superior tonnage will be a testament to the need for faith in manufacture. Oh, so ah! Okay, let's... <coughs> Heard thou anything? Let's hear what Garrett says here. So, this is where the hammers send their bad apples. Mm, the noise Fine has stopped. Me. Okay. Brethren, I am saddened I have to remind thee again that thou art here to toil and not go on escapades in the maintenance tunnels and nearby sewage systems. The underground complex built around our factories is dangerous, and I do not want to have to explain to Father Simon how some of his flock got injured in the event it happens to thee. Let the heathens of the Public Works Bureau deal with the maintenance areas. After all, they were the ones who wanted to manage them. Chief Engineer Welliver. It was no doubt... And then to my brethren, 
I know our humble church is small and is lacking the necessary funds in order to restore its full glory. But the fact that most of the uh, decided to go to St. Peridor's for the first sermon of Endemia instead of attending mine is an affront to me and to the builder. As such, I have decided to double the shifts of those who cho chose to disregard my directives and have the shift of the faithful few who attended mine own sermon. Thou knowest who thou art, and Brother Welliver does too. So declared Father Simon. Nothing. <laughs> we are actually going to jump up here. Go through this section. <clears throat> Hide out. Uh, there's a loaf. <sighs> That'll take you down to the stairs there again. And up here is a very well hidden hammer. And there's a water arrow here too. Total 407. <laughs> now if you go down here, and you come back to the stairs that we just went through, go this direction. Seems like somebody's been interrogated here. Not so good outcomes. Then you come back to where we were, the 164 and the spiders down here. <sighs> See, we want to be dark here. If you go down here. simply come to the door next to that 164 area. So we're going to head this direction. So once we get up here... We can actually come to the underground or underpass right by uh, Lord Porter's estate. So that would be right here. So we've basically just taken all the different possible passages and I've shown you everything I could to go from here to here. But we picked up a piece of loot. Without a hammer. What we also have... <sighs> in this part of town there is a moss arrow. And then you can just explore and admire the view. Now in this part, there's also a very nicely hidden section above the alley. Two stacks of silver coins. Right there. Board maker poor house. You can't get into the poor houses. Uh, or no, I don't think so. So here we have then the the factory plaza, I call it, which is just magnificent. Look at all this. I love the ambiance and I love this palette. This is my favorite part of the mission. And I really wish that you could have gotten into more of the buildings here. I wish there was a whole mission just like this. just encompasses the the idea of industrial steampunk sort of vibes, right? Let's make a reason. So there is a, a good
guard right there that is quite difficult to dodge. We gotta wait for him, I think. There's also a guard at the very, very distance, um, if you can see this. Um, I decided not to turn off fog. I mean, you can, just because it's so nice in this mission, let me turn it off just for a second. So you guys can see how different it looks. It's probably not a lot clearer, but... Uh, there isn't fog in the entire mission. So, I'll keep it on for this part. Hopefully YouTube's compression doesn't butcher it too bad. shelter with five coins. Okay, we're gonna over here. <sighs> Not the best time to do so. Best to follow that guard. Also be on the lookout for the other guard. Also one in the distance, but I don't think he can see us this far away. So we've now sort of made a loop. We've gone through here and are now approaching this Priory Plaza from the east. So then we avoid going down the stairs. What do I see there? Might be able to sneak by on his left side. And what do we have here? Didn't we put a and 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 to this what for? Well, horses are forbidden in this ward since the burgomaster slipped on a cake. <laughs> That's right. But the new Animal Law Amendment Act obliges all taverns in downtown. To be equipped with stalls under penance. What the taff? This doesn't even make sense. These stupid laws contradict themselves. Can't disagree with that. But these stupid laws, as you say, distinguish us from filthy pagans. Come see me at the police station tomorrow. So that was a conversation between a guard and the pub owner, actually in the plaza below, outside the pub. So 
we have to go into the alley behind us after this guy is gone. Here's uh, Moss Arrow. And there's also two stacks of coins up there that are very difficult to see. Or 447. <sighs> Let's see, I'm not sure if we're safe here. So they were right down there. along the ledge here, pretty much all the way around. Oops. This guy here has a <laughs> healing potion, if you're looking for all the pickpockets. On that balcony there, there's a bucket with three water arrows. probably better to go up there after he has been stationed there. Probably think so. I don't think anybody else can see <coughs> us if we move. that we slide a little bit. <laughs> Hello? Is someone there? Oh, what? Let's wait for him to go a little bit more. It's a tough area, this. Um, one of the toughest in the mission. Didn't have that big of a problem, though. that so I can't do that. Ooh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I don't like that the <coughs> fact that we can't. <sighs> There. That he shouldn't have heard. It's just annoying because they can't give first alerts when they're stopped at the end of the patrol, mm -hmm. even though they technically do alert. But when we don't hear it, we can't judge it. And I think it was as quiet as it could have been there. Had a little tap in the beginning. Let's see if we can do that without having a tap. <laughs> <sighs> I don't think I don't think I can do that without being quieter. <sighs> Tapping constantly. That was worse than the time I did a couple of moments ago. <sighs> That's acceptable. When are they going to bring me my dinner? That's what I want to know. When are they going to bring Is there an easier way to get up here, maybe? Because you can't get up on the back side. As far as I know. I don't think so. Is that in here? Silver plate in here? I think that's all. I want to show you guys is if you shoot a rope Who's there? in here there who is there is someone there it's only a thin layer of soil here that you can hit <sighs> get up to a plateau um, here's a gas arrow. And there is a fantastic view. Uh, part of the factory that we can't get to because the lever's broken. There's a disruption bomb. But then there is a coal chute with a nugget. bumping into here, but it's something that I don't want to bump into. Oh, I can't... I'm going to land on the soil there. There we go. Danger 
yours to maybe. <laughs> Save it there. But he didn't see me. Because then he would have given, given a settling remark when he started patrolling again, for sure. So he didn't spot me. I, I did that without any first alerts. Uh, I was just worried when on his station like that if he heard me, but when he was walking down to his to the location where he was stationed, he didn't hear me tap my feet then. It was only when he was a little bit up that staircase at that point. continue around the ledge, you can go down, there's a ladder you can drop onto, there's moss on top of that roof to help you out. factory itself. Here's a mine. Let's see, can we wait here? I think so. Walkway, rather, this one. Placed rope arrow, and here's a smoke bomb. Stick, and then on this crate there are three broadhead arrows.
have simply come to the area you would have gone if you had just gone, didn't have climbed that rope that was already there. Now we can drop down to the bottom level here. Like that. Another rope. Well, that was lucky. Another rope. Oh, 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 oh. or hurt us here. <coughs> There's a gold nugget. Total 702. <sighs> Now we're in the northern parts of the plaza here. You can get into uh, a different factory this way. We're not going to do that. <sighs> so we're go through here. There's a loaf of bread, some kind of a workroom. this door. We're gonna enter the church, which is right there now. Wait, you're not coming in here, are you? <coughs> you are. Okay. Through here. Well, not really too important. Just gonna check something. Huh? Okay, good. I was worried whether he had alerted to the door, but since he is first alerting now, then he didn't. This is the pub, um, the black bird. These notices here you can't read. So we've done everything basically in the streets. Head into Church of Saint Belisaire of Caladia. Not 
let's see. So here's just a storage room. Give, give generously for the builder's plan. Okay, in the kitchen there is a gold plate. And we can pick the lock to the bedroom. We don't really need to go in there. There's a footlocker with a couple of cheeses in it and a little journal. 19 to 31. Every day I question the builder's plan for me. Why? Why, O oh builder, didst thou send me to this wretched church where half of my flock is composed of miscreants who are not worthy to speak thy name, and the other a vindictive swine who will st stop at nothing to climb hierarchy? I can name the first half, for they were foolish enough to think I would forgive their attending the sermon of Father Quentin. Brothers Sendor, Ernest, Martino, Robert, Blanco, Fidelio, and Klopdar. What says they, O oh Master Builder? Are those heathens worthy of thine blessings? And what do thou have to say about the other half, these the adders, always ready to pounce on their brethren for a letter of recommendation? Brother Welliver is the only one besides me who tries to run this place properly and make thee proud. 191031. Tis simply unbel unbelievable, inconceivable even. The chalice of St. Graymal, the father of boilers, was stolen from under Cardinal Berengier's watch. Is this a sign, O Master Builder? Must I finally be rid of this dreary outpost and return to the place I deserve? I rejoice at Berengier's failure to protect the chalice, for I always knew he was a good-for-nothing and unworthy of thy blessings. First, he failed to properly train one of his priests in the delicate art of consecration, and now the news he desperately tried to conceal reached mine ears. Mayhaps if I press the superior Cardinal Bellarmine not to punish Berengier and humiliate him before the builder, will he see how virtuous I am? how unqualified Berengier is to roost over the Abbey of St. Gremel. After pondering it over St. Corvus' shrine, this seems to me like it's a great plan. I thank the O Builder for the inspiration. My days are here, soon to be over, and never again shall I breathe the fumes in the stench of Suchine. Okay, we don't need to pick the lock on that door, so... We're not going to. Head. We're going to head down here. St. Corpus' Shrine. That we need to pick. Let's see here. No. So here there's a piece of loot. Candlestick 802. Then we're going to head back into the public workstation. This door, and there's a conversation we're going to listen to. Indeed, tis a negligence most foul. The chalice of St. Graymall, the father of boilers, stolen under his very nose. Father Simon, who is sadly misguided, is trying to help Cardinal Berengier, but I believe the superior Cardinal Bellarmine shall harshly punish him, as it should be, and as it shall be. Wait, dost thou doubt Father Simon's intentions? Our good father has never strayed from the Builder's path, and he thinks Cardinal Berengier did nothing wrong, as do I. Thou wouldst be wise to listen to him. How can thou say such things? Truly the trickster hath gotten to thee. Look around thee, brother. Thou knowest it to be the truth. How dare thou question mine holy faith in the Builder? The Builder has no use for skeptics and naysayers such as thee. <coughs> <laughs> okay. Over there on the table is a smoke bomb. There's a stack of silver coins and a readable. 
Brethren, I'm saddened I have to remind thee again that thou art here to toil and not go on escapades in the maintenance tunnels and nearby sewage systems. The underground complex built around our factories is dangerous, and I do not want to have to explain to Father Simon how some of his flock got injured in the event it happens to thee. Let the heathens of the Public Works Bureau deal with the maintenance areas. After all, they were the ones who wanted to manage them. Chief Engineer Welliver. Okay, okay over here is uh, cheese. Down on the floor here. Can barely see it. Are two broadhead arrows. Okay. I think the one guy that went this way is a purse. If thou be yeah, he has a purse. Okay. Let's wait for him to come back then. It's just for show. All right. <laughs> Here. This is actually where we were earlier. This Did the thou door. see someone over Remember there? This area? Oh, thief! But you can only open that door from this side. stack of copper coins. Twenty-one. I'm gonna make a real save because this is maybe the most difficult piece of loot in the streets at least here. So that guy there is stuck. Which actually is very beneficial for us. Because... He's facing away. And there's a purse right there. He patrols along that ledge. And he comes back up here and goes back down. So, you know, sometimes luck shines our way, I guess. And now that purse became very easy to take, 844. Um, however, here comes my ghost challenge for you guys. <coughs> there is a fire arrow right down in the corner of the lava flow there, or the magma flow. Thought I saw. Okay. And I want you guys to start up no one on the top ledge there, go all the way down and get that fire arrow and come back up to safety without taking any supreme busts. Uh, but you can't have a situation like this where one of them is stuck. It has to be a normal situation where both of them are patrolling regularly. So that can take a little bit of, of trial and error. So yeah, he is supposed to patrol along the metal ledge over to those spinning gears, and then come all the way back up here and check this, and then go back down. I don't know if he does anything else. Um, let's see. We are... I'm actually going to make another real save right now. Make it on top of it. And then I'm going to go up here. This takes you out to the northern part of the factory plaza. And there isn't really much to do in here. Except... 
can't shoot a rope up here. Get up to a work ledge that is above. to armor thyself against their punishments and their lies and trickery. Here. I tried all sorts of ways to get up here, and then I finally realized that part of this railing here is actually wood. Here is a gas mine. Those are very useful. If you don't ghost, and a disruption bomb. And there is a door here, but and it looks maybe like there's a room behind it, but I haven't found a way in there, so I don't think there's anything here. No loot, though. Basically done. Oh yeah. One more thing I can show you. Who is there? Is Identify that so over here. here. Yeah, Door that takes you out to a staircase that winds down. I'll show you the other side of that in a little bit. a dead spider at the bottom and a readable public works allocation oh eight nine nine oh seven three four six nine zero allocated per the authority vested in avi superior cardinal Bellar bellarmin foreman attestation made whole safe as requested by wellover as so required these completed works are confirmed by evidence of sight and hand to glorify the master builder in their craft and purpose signed uh, He's not a cardinal, but C. Engineer Welliver, Father Simon. So, this hole has been made safe by putting two boards over it. Here, get into where those where those spiders are, and this takes you back up here. Okay. I just want to make sure I close those grates. <laughs> then we are done. Now we can finally head down here. back up here you come up then to that door like I said right next to the to the underground foundry we're not gonna go there we're gonna go the only remaining place we have not gone yet so this is a very confusing layout kind of like thieves guild esque I think I showed you all the pathways, I believe so. 4429. So now we're just headed down, down, down. Go here if we want. Two water arrows. Three water arrows at the bottom here. And here's a keeper glyph. It opens this. Ah, a secret passage. I think this closes on its own, yeah. Alright. So if anyone didn't see this coming, then we are now in a keeper hideout or sanctuary. So now we checked off the first objective and got a new one. What is this place? It would be wise to find some information on who these guys are. Okay.
see. First of all, there's a readable. Scribe Cedric, we welcome you to First Keeper's Watch. Your task here will be to assist Keeper Julian with his chronicle on the ancient artifacts found in Kareth Thin, or the Lost City. You will find a map of the compound with this letter, so you can get acquainted with these sacred halls. We trust you will prove an excellent acolyte. Yours in knowledge, Superior Elder Nathaniel. So here's a map. I am going to take those maps. Um, so I do not count that as unnecessary pickup, mainly because I'm going to use that map uh, repeatedly to show my way around and to navigate. So if you do that, you're fine. Um, so now we've gotten two more maps. This is the first floor, and we enter through the staircase here. And um, there's a lot. When I came down here the first time, I was like, what the heck is all this? So it's a whole second mission almost. Uh, I maybe wish that this mission would have been split up into two, uh, where you had an industrial part of town uh, and found the Keeper entrance, and then the next mission was in the Keeper Sanctuary. And maybe that the Keeper hideout was a little bit different uh, in terms of layout. I don't know. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that as we go along. But I wish that it was two separate missions. I really do. But you can't really be greedy when you have a 10-mission campaign. So... Um, I think that overall I enjoy the city streets and the industrial part of town more than I like the section that's coming up right now. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about why that is throughout, but uh, anyway, we come down here. We have a couple of towers. We have the North Tower, the South Tower, and the Blue Flame Tower. And then we have the Council Tower in the Southeast. There's also a big dormitory section here. Um, there's an important staircase up to the Reliquary where we're going to find something. Dining room right, right outside the dorms. And uh, scriptorium and a, you know, a couple of libraries. A lot of libraries. A lot of, a lot of rooms with books. And there's a room of maps as well. There's also a tower uh, belonging to the interpreter just south of here. It's on this floor. And then on the second level, there's a third level too. But that's not a complete layout. The second floor, there's similarly, you have the North and the South Tower and the Blue Flame Tower. And the Central Library, you can access some balconies up here. The scriptorium has part of a second level to it, and the Council Tower actually goes up to a third level, where the Superior Elder uh, has its uh, location. So this staircase here goes up to the third floor. Um, this is the staircase up to the Reliquary, which also is on the third floor. There's an Entrustment Tower. These stairs go back down, um, and these stairs go up to the third level, where the Superior Elder is found above the Council Tower. There's also some guest chambers and a hall of glass in between the North and South Tower, and some Elder's offices up here. And then notice there is a restricted library. That's where we're going to end. So we are going to take um, a trip around the first floor, sort of uh, counterclockwise. We're going to sort of head west and then southeast and end in the council tower. And we're going to come up here and then we're going to do a, an opposite route this way, hit the reliquary and then go to the restricted library and end there so that we don't have to do too much backtracking. Time to save though. We're going to listen to a conversation now right away. Do you sense it? Sense what? What kind of it? At least a peculiar aura. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yes. Now that you mention it, I've never felt anything quite like it before. They have been compromised. Come, let us inform the others. Just when I thought this city couldn't get any more sinister. There's a whole damn secret organization under no it. No doubt its contents are woefully outdated. Alright. They can sense that there's something wrong with the aura. Maybe that's because of our presence. Ah, I'm not sure. I'm not of course that clip was right. I thought it was a good idea to manage the captain <laughs> into the section of the modern organic one. I mean... Translated from all sense, shivers down my spine. What the... Okay, this...
This is the central library here. We're going to head around here. There's a lot of readables. And um, many of them are exploring the back or uh, describing the story of the city and the history of the realm that we're in. This is a uh, Gold candlestick, total 894. Let's jump over here. Here's a book. The Builder's Machine. In the beginning, everything was dark, raw, and wild. Life was limited by the fear of shadows and the beasts within, all ruled by the monstrosity that is the trickster. And in the middle of this eternal night, the first sparks of light brought with it the Master Builder, enveloped in a bright sh uh, shine. Chasing the darkness deep into the maw of the beast with his hammer, he offered his vision to mankind, so that they would see all that surrounds them and gave them hands, so that they could uh, process the raw into the refined, cleaning away all impurity. And so did the faithful, guided by his wisdom, start to follow him as a beacon through the mist, so that man learns instead of fearing, tames instead of enduring, and faces instead of fleeing. Thus did mankind under his guidance explore forests and change its clearings into villages and waters into bridges. This is how the builder's machine came to be, transmitting his teachings to his children so that the knowledge keeps going and the world keeps expanding beyond what is unknown and dark, taking over the uncontrollable and looking in, in the face of nature to build the realm he envisioned for the faithful. Whoever contributes to his dream is a part of his machine, working like a cog so it moves further into wisdom and light across petty wars and ignorant squabbles. Cursed be the ones who work against the society he made, because there is no worse sin than stopping the march of progress with fake knowledge, stolen tools, and laziness. So be it known to all of those worshipping the trickster and the basic instincts he infused in the hearts of beasts we used to be, praise the Master Builder. Okay. Now, what we also have a couple of areas we have some glyphs that can take you into different areas here's one so this one right here I'm actually gonna take now just for a little bit This actually takes us over the scriptorium, and you can, um, so this took us into a shaft here, and then if you go south, you can get to the scriptorium and end up on the southern side, the balcony of the scriptorium. We're not going to do that. We're instead going to head in here, because this is the, um, Master Librarian's Quarters, which is this. And I'm doing that now and then head back down because this section here can be a little bit tricky and it's a little bit exposed. There are some patrollers. Um, the door isn't pickable or anything, but it's just easier to get into this way. Here's a valuable book. Now, if you see this type of pattern on the floor, that's tile. So that is loud. So just step away if you can, and here's another valuable book. I don't think there's any readables in here. 954. Let's head back down. What is this? There. 
There's another readable. A brief history of the city's great families, composed by Keeper Creon, second lore master during the year of 754, as it was commissioned by Keeper Lutetius, third keeper of Dark Watch. But before a crowd, he trampled underfoot the imperial decrees of his own cousin instead, thinking that there was none left alive in the entire barony who was interested in seeing that they should be carried out. Because of this particular event, the heritage of the Black family's blood lineage was the issue of ambitions and interests that went way beyond simple blood feuds be between powerful families. For the Baron and the Emperor were woefully engaged. Thus was the prefiguration of Cathrian Black's woes, half a year after when she sowed the seeds of a short but violent civil war between her two remaining brothers. Paragraph 6. On the state of childlessness of Lady Cathrian Black and its consequences on the Mad War of 398. However, to understand how the Civil War rang the death knell of the Black Dynasty, one must make a pause and understand the incident that took place a little before the aforesaid event. Old and childless, Lady Catherine thought about adopting a parent more or less close to her to pass on her opulent heritage. She immediately designed Russward Bressling II, to whom she immediately offered her favorite Chatelaine, uh, Juman's court, Juman court, as well as her enchanted hair comb. But be it either because she wasn't really convinced by her own choice, either compelled to give in more pressing topics, or either subjected to a whim of late. Soon after the designation, she tried to nullify this decision to the benefit of Lady Lionel de Crayard, widow to the late Thomas and de Crayard, which would have let her sons take over her fiefdom soon after, fiefdom, soon after her death. If the chronicles are to be believed, this was only motivated by Catherine's Cath graciousness, who only wanted to restore the once respectable the Crayard house, who suffered disgrace by the hand of the cruel Lord Thomas, who bribed petty vassals and knaves, upon the orders of a warlock, rumor said, to assassinate the grand compulsor Mogger the Bald, 392. If the imperial bureaucracy raised their entire castle to the ground in response, as well as dispatching assassins. Thomas and the Crayard, however, managed to obtain a pardon from the Emperor himself through influence and well-placed bribes, before ultimately meeting a strange doom devoured by his own very own horses. The second adoption sowed the roots of Discordia. As far from being the gentle and varicund noblewoman described by the Chronicles, Lady Lionella was swift in taking full advantage of her newfound situation by securing gauges and com complicities among the local gentry. For his part, Rossward Blessling, Blessling II still purported to assert his rights and brought both Lady Catherine and Lady Lionella to a trial before the Imperial Diet, the latter refusing to settle the dispute. So, uh, just backstory and history, really, of the city. Nothing that really pertains to anything that I can recognize, and certainly nothing that will help us in this mission. Okay, so now we are here. We're gonna head south. No, sorry, we're. Where am I? Uh, we're gonna here. We're gonna head uh, west now and go back north. Maybe it's better to go ah, north than I west. I cannot believe of the confidence on display amongst this current stock of scribes. Spilling ink of such a must be simply unforgivable. Simply unforgivable. Someone's skulking around here. Oh, there he was. Where is that book again? Ah, does it took me to find him again? to the north tower which is just to the northwest here what do they think they're accomplishing there's a purse hmm. I 
wonder what the interpreter meant by this. I think he saw us. Too dark. This place is too dark and cold. Can't find <laughs> Find anything in here. Silver candlestick. Oh, let's hide. Let's see. <laughs> Here too, 20 chapters explaining why empiricism, empiricism is the method of the modern intellectual. Preface by uh, Gilderoy Palmington. Polyatomus' most outrageous lie is thus. As a disciple of the Perillian school, he thought that reality was divided into two worlds. The invisible world, of perfect forms, and the imperfect material world, which was nothing but an imperfect reflection of the invisible world. I, my gentle readers, strongly disagree. For the logic he used to come to such conclusion is, by his own definition, a mere shadow of the tr true truth, that is the true logic. Therefore, the entirety of his philosophy of truth and logic can only be restricted to the material world which with, with which he lives in, and not to the outside world whose version of truth and logic might be different, or in Polyadamos' own words, perfect. Imperfect real realities beget imperfect illusions. Our perception of what is a tree uh, is in comparison to a stone is merely our imperfect understanding of what different differentiates things. Therefore, how can Polyadamos know if the perfect form of a stone is not also the perfect form of a tree? The answer is that he can't know, being born in the material world. Where is that book again? Ah, can't okay. find anything in here. What the? That book doesn't belong here. So here we have the staircase up to the reliquary. So that we're not going to take right now. Mm. I wonder what the interpreter meant by this. So we're now in this little um, vault. Let's make another real save. See, this is the dining room. It's kind of pretty difficult. So let's head in here. Just wanted to scoot in here quickly. Here's a healing potion, and there's a readable. I wish I was a dark watch. So we now scooted through this section. Uh, there is a piece of loot in the middle of the dining room table. We'll take that a little bit later. Um, the dining room is, is a little bit exposed, but there's not a lot of people that walk straight through it. So anyway. The Blackbrook Connection. It did not take long for the Baron to declare war against Blackbrook. The rival city had been raiding the vast farmlands and outposts belonging to the barony for months at this point, and its guild of inventors was, was and still is coming dangerously close to inventing the most powerful war machines mankind has ever seen. The Hammerite Order, which has a very strong presence in Blackbrook, wishes to remain neutral in this conflict, a fact that provoked the ire of both the Baron and Queen Annette of Blackbrook, who would almost go as far as to accuse them of conspiring to reap the benefits of the outcome of the war to the detriment of everyone else. While it is not known at this time whether the Hammerites are taking any profit from the situation, what is known is that the Undermarket is thriving despite both city-states being in a state of total war. 
Indeed, it is quite common to see contraband, gold, goods, or even livestock smuggled across the front lines by sleazy merchants who have enough power and lucre to bribe soldiers and officers alike. Many criminal organizations have sent ambassadors and other representatives to both cities to establish a permanent connection between them. A relevant example would be how Jordan and Mafiotis, two genius inventors with several factories in Black Book, have managed to sell their wares to the city's underworld for a hefty price while keeping this operation a complete secret for now. Those names sound familiar, so if anyone in chat or in the comments could point out a reference to those, maybe? Hopefully there is one. Note, a thorough list of undermarket guilds and merchants is sorely needed. <coughs> Alright, so we're going to head um, west right now, right around the corner. No doubt its contents are woefully outdated. These old books look so weird. Like they're made of human flesh? Red. He's here. There is a vent. We're not going to take that, but that takes you. Actually, back across the dining room. Like this. I'm just going to show you where this goes. Here. This takes you to... Oh, yeah, yeah. We might actually... No, we're not going to use that later, are we? Check my notes. That takes you up, actually, to this room. So one goes from the kitchen, which is down here, across the dining room, to um, this room right here, and then, yeah, it connects to the second floor here. So useful. Let's see. Section with the modern hey. Hey. Dust. How are you? Cobwebs. Darkness. Incompetence. Uh, I wish I was a dark watch. a good idea to merge the Carathden antiquity section with the modern healing potion and a readable compendium of modern medicine volume 23 the Syrian cut a spleen surgery method make four gashes 10 inches long under the heart with a thin blade remove two ribs using a cleaver remove the damaged spleen and apply five drops of balm oil onto the arteries before stitching note if balm oil is insufficient replace it with Echinus oil, or an equivalent thereof. Is that an actual oil? Uh, anathanatosis, slowing down the necrosis. Extract two pounds of flesh from a walker and boil it for six hours. Cut the flesh into pieces and serve it to the subject thrice a day. Note, such treatment can lead to episodes of aggression or violence. Keeping the subject restrained and under observation is highly recommended. 
nothing else in this room here. It's just a little sitting area. So we have here. This is a dormitory barracks up here. Oops, get slow down here. You got a ring. of gold coins. Where can we be safe here? There. Let's see. Top left one here is pickable. That has a flash bomb. There's a lot of empty footlockers. There's also a couple of there, uh, sorry, a couple of letters that we're going to write. I'm going to try to get all the readables as a part of my run. So not read and then just reload. That increases the challenge a little bit. I think I've done that so the far. The Glyph Warden was upset today. Really? Um, Celine, or Celine? You wouldn't believe the sort of thing that happened here. Recently I was crossing the Hall of Glass when a figure ran toward me in a state of total shock. It was Keeper Oliver, trembling like a terrified child, his features sunken as if in death. A few of our brethren guided him to the infirmary as he screamed hoarsely and without rest, claiming that he'd witnessed statues moving and speaking in voices to make your skin crawl. I can't imagine this sort of breakdown thing or taking place in Dark Watch. Here. K. As much it is pa as it pains me to see that the standing part of our ancient downtown sanctuary has been a cat house for a few years now, the invaluable knowledge within its books squandered and used as fuel for the fireplaces, being able to watch the new occupants through the statues is as is a blessing for our pure pursuit of careful observation and chronicling. Enchanting statues in household is an incredibly hard chat task, given only to the very best elements of our order. But what are the odds of a derelict keeper compound being used as a hotspot for all these decadent nobles? All these secret recipes for the picking. All these secrets ripe for the picking. As far as I can tell, the tower complex has not been reached by anyone yet except an old tribe of Kraymen. The cave-in and the subsequent flooding about a century ago were the perfect opportunity for them to proliferate. The scriptorium statue does not permit me to see how ruined the tower complex is, nor am I able to see anything else except scattered books on the ground, cobwebs and blue pincers. The other enchanted statue lies at the bottom of the cave, in the soil. I wonder if the Chalice of Souls is still there. I think it's about time you and I mounted an, un an unofficial expedition and retrieved our precious tomes and this artifact. Just imagine how handsomely we would be rewarded. So this, of course, is from the Chalice of Souls missions in um, in um, the hollow, the brothel that we break in, we find the Chalice of Souls in the old abandoned sanctuary below. Okay. So we're now going to head um, let's see, southwest, I think. <laughs> City streets. Uh, I like this part, this section here, the dormitory. It looks different. Room, which should be right here. 
is it readable? A compilatio of Hammerite treaties. Volume uh, 172, is that correct? If my Roman numeral is right. Whereas the said peasants have been notified and informed by the Holy Concilium of the Hamrite Order's said envoys, it was the decision of the Order to limit and control the seed's nature and origin thereinafter mentioned, and to take an oath on the good intention and to ensure peaceful trading relationships between the Order and their village. The said inhabitant, inhabitantees of the village aforementioned do agree to cover, modify, or destroy any icon, fetish, or symbol described as impure or tarnishing according to the Hamrite Order's principles. Also, do they agree to accept to order the Hamrite Order's holy hammer icon within their village hall? Uh, any villager involved in witchcraft is ordered to immediately renounce and pray to the builder under supervision of an official from the Hamrite Order in keeping with, with to the aforementioned laws. And with the, a view to show the satisfaction of the Hamrite Order with the behavior and good conduct of the villagers to this treaty, the Holy Concilium of the Hamrite Order, through its envoys, makes them a present of ten pounds of nails and hammers for each inhabitantes belonging to the village here mentioned. Okay, how wonderful. There's also somewhere at least. a moss arrow in one of these. Can't remember which one. Okay. <coughs> Whoa. I don't... I, he didn't alert to the door, so... Made some noise there, but nobody seemed to be in the area. When I did that, I took a gold candlestick on the main table, worth 50, and then this blue vase, worth 100. Let's read this. A History of the Precursors, by Elder Clive. Long ago, there was an old empire said to extend beyond the known world and inhabited by an ancient civilization known as the Shamardom. The Shamardom's origins are unknown, and their chronicles rely on describing events rather than specific dates. However, the study of their knowledge offers to the reader several answers such as the location of lost prophecies and hidden glyphs or artifacts. The main source of knowledge comes from the seven tablets written by the counselor Fuquan, keeper of the keys and warden of the glyphs, a precursor whose actions have extended the time of his people by two decades with the policy of study and control of magic. I think Fuquan was mentioned in the Dark Project, right? I think one of the readables in the Lost City mission mentions uh, him. I'm not 100% there. Gareth Din, the capital of the Shamardom Empire, was destroyed by a tremendous earthquake one year after Fuquan's assassination, orchestrated by the Guild of Enlightenment. The mages of the guild considered his deeds compromising to their ways, disturbing the peace of the sentients uh, locked in their sanctums. Alright, so we have now moved um, east of the dining room. Uh, so we're in this room right now. We're going to head down here. This is the actual uh, kitchen. Ah, I'm a lackwit. Of course that glyph was right. When we move through the dining room, we seem to just hit a gap in their patrols, which is pretty beneficial, because it can be tough. Sometimes I swear they keep it cold in here so we don't fall asleep. That's probably not uh, too far from the truth. Step out! Step out. <coughs>
So this is then the entrance that I showed you to the shoots up there. Let's see, there's some f uh, food in here, but there's readable too. Here. The Codex of Fungi by fellow Terraborn. Uh, Lumicus. Inedible. Common. Found mainly in dark and humid environments. Also known as light mush. This mushroom is typically consumed by cave animals such as Burrix or the giant bats of Bon, who then spread its spores via their feces. In humans, consuming a light mush could cause intense pain in the stomach and make one's body fluids glow up for up to a week. Glow for up to a week. Though it's not known to cause death. Uh, Secularius ungula. Deadly, uncommon, found mainly in swamps and cemeteries. Known as the trickster's hoof. This is one of the most lethal mushrooms uh, on the continent. Um, was this one of the items in Turning of the Leaves? I can't remember. I don't think that's part of the canon, canon but it's a nice reference if it is. Eating a trickster's hoof, or maybe it's just in the regular missions too, I'm not sure. Eating a trickster's hoof causes hallucinations, hematemesis, hematemesis, and finally death in less than three minutes. So hematemesis is uh, vomiting or throwing up of blood. Due to its effects, possessing this mushroom is considered a crime in seven cities and heresy by the Hammerhead Order. Green mold, inedible, common, found in many environments with decaying life forms. Also known as moss crystals, the green mold is a harmless fungus feeding from dead organic matter and water. It is recognizable by its specific shape, which looks like a crystal made of moss. Despite causing no damage, the mold it produces is invasive, and several laws order it to order its removal whenever discovered. Ingesting green mold is known to be good for the health, but its volatile aspect also means a high risk of suffocation. Therefore, it must only be administered by professional physicians. Selenus cl clavus. Edible, rare. Found in forests for several days following summer thunderstorms. Shaped like a red nail, this mushroom is difficult to notice due to its tiny size. Its unique spice, taste, and medicinal properties make this one of the most researched mushrooms in the region. Many scriptures refer to it as the ultimate remedy to all diseases, but there is no scientific evidence that proves this yet. Frequent ones here. Uh, we are now in the south tower. We're right here. There's a book in there. Says <laughs> and there is a silver candlestick. Treatise on the Dark Ages by Keeper Rhymius. But the most viable way to identify the coming of a dark age is to identify the anomalies, more or less impressive, that ooze from it. Animal downpour, spontaneous burnings, or collective hysteria are only a fragment of the possible phenomena that can occur during such events. The only thing that allows us to differentiate major dark ages from minor ones is whether our order shall be implicated or not. A minor dark age will find resolution by itself, whereas a major dark age shall not only implicate our order but also the third party only known as the one true keeper. Fortunately, the prophecies of old deciphered by ancient keepers predict the existence of only three such ma major dark ages. <coughs> okay. Should also be... Base 1465. All right, so now we are going to head east. We're done pretty much. We haven't really done anything in the Blue Flame Tower, but there is nothing down there. There's a readable sort of halfway up, but we can take that from above later. We've done all of this essentially. So now we're going to head into Scriptorium and Movement Maps and then hit the Council Tower and then head, head upstairs. Mm -hmm. 
chest right now. Mm. Salute here. Kept it up. We don't understand. I did it there. I cannot believe the incompetence of display amongst this current stock of scribes. Spilling ink on such an ancient text. Simply unforgivable. Let's see. Can we get past him in there? Someone sculpt cannot, so we have to wait. Oh yes, I'm sure that is the way. I'm not to talk to them about this. As if they'd listen. I wonder what the interpreter meant by this. A little fed up with the way the superior elder looks down on us. What a title. Fifteen, that's correct. Maps. So here we have a map of the city. This is a map of, of Bonn. Which is nice. There's a silver candlestick and there's no readables in here. This is the scriptorium. I don't think there's anything in there, actually. There's just two individuals. There is something on the top floor. We are now ready to head into the council tower, and there is a conversation upstairs that you can hear from down below. That's the problem. You keep expecting people to be as smart as you are. The scribes that you down. Spilling ink on such an ancient text. is simply unforgivable. Keepers, there is an intruder in the sanctuary. We do not know who breached our compound yet, but stay alert and ever vigilant. Truly, the unwritten times are upon us. So they're sensing that there's somebody here, but I think 
thinking maybe it's carrots. We have to pick the lock on the door into the glyph ward, and there's no way around that. Here's a gold candlestick and a readable. Young Oliver is now sleeping, but it is not his health that worries me. His report of a statue moving by itself is what's troubling me, for I have heard of the same phenomenon occurring in several of our compounds. Our stone market seat, glyph's vigil, and glass lock, to name a few. Could our glyph of enchantment be responsible for this? Could it be the result of some mischief from its part? Granting us vision is one thing, but giving statues sentience is another. Glyph's misbehaving, for a lack of a better term, is also concerning, for it's happened a few times in the past few years. The most notable example being Keeper Catalina's scalding of her writing hand when she was working on a complex essay. Too many questions and no answers. Alright, over here is a medallion. That hits the 1600 loot goal. And then there is actually another hidden piece of loot up here. Another... candlestick. Now we're going to head into the council tower. Here's a healing potion on the chair there. This is the interpreter's tower in this direction. There's no way to get to the interpreter's tower as far as I know from upstairs. So you have to go here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Is that you? Now, the Interpreter's Tower is actually a mix, I think, of two things. One, it looks very much like the fenced bridge in Disorientation. But it also, the tower itself looks strikingly, strikingly like the same type of tower in uh, Winter's Eve from Calendra's Legacy. Here is a purse. Also a journal. Dissension among the Hamrite Order by Keeper Hemdal. The balance we must protect within the city is fragile and has mainly to do with the conflict between the two main factions vying for its control, the Pagans and the Hamrites. However, it would be unwise to ignore the conflicts brewing within these factions. Whereas the Pagans are mostly in agreement of their methods and beliefs in their endeavors, the Hamrite Order has found itself divided on several fronts. The main school of thought is known as the Builder's Teaching and is entirely focused on the righteous and righteousness of the soul to maintain an organized and active society. Their methods consist of choosing few quality members rather than recruiting a large quantity without scrutiny and making use of fear tactics to safeguard order and instill respect to the law. This doctrine, however, does not focus on fighting paganism nor on the expansion of cities, which is where the disagreements come from. In Blackbrook, the main ideology is known as the Fellowship of the Builder, its members, less focused on justice, choose to focus on smithing and trading to spread the builder's words via endeavor. Referred to as merchants in disguise by the Holy Council due to the fortune accumulated by their high priests and their rarity of arrests, their main disagreement with the builder's teachings is the use of fear to control public order. Instead, they prefer to leave this work to secular police 
to focus more on fighting the trickster's worshippers and on urban work, which makes the fellowship highly popular within the nobility. On the other hand, the red cog hammerites are rarely seen inside cities and are famous for their aggressive attitude. <coughs> the members of this doctrine are active along countryside roads, protecting travelers and woodcutters from pagans and woodland creatures. This ideology is, however, controversial, and several of its members were accused of sorcery and heresy due to their skewed interpretation of the builder's teaching and acts of cruelty against innocents. It also focuses on quantity rather than quality, hiring en masse from the order's courts. Besides, it is the only school of thought that does not apply the nymph presumption law, thus freely accepting women into the order. While these three doctrines have complemented each other for the most part, they are slowly shifting towards a schism, especially after the arrest of several priests of both the Fellowship and the Red Cog Order by the Holy Council for apostasy, a sign of an un uncertain future. All right. A lot of descriptions of dissension and disagreements. Now, um, a little bit of an Easter egg here. Let's see. <laughs> If you jump up there, I think it's at this end, actually. <laughs> I don't know if you could see it properly, but you can definitely hear it. <laughs> there, barely to the right. So that is, um, I'm sure that some of you know about what that is. It's um, called the Dopefish. And if anyone in chat could tell me the first video game that the Dopefish appeared in. Which is such a nostalgic trip for me. Because that video game series was a big part of my PC gaming childhood. I don't think I can do that, so I have to wait for him, which is rather annoying. Yeah, I grew up on PC games. We never had a console system, Nintendo or Sega or anything like that. My dad bought a PC when I was like, eight or nine. So I grew up on Sierra Adventure games, even the original text-based ones. And... Um, Lucas Arts, Monkey Island, stuff like that. Uh, I'm a so let's make a real save. Um, let me just see, where are we now? Yeah. Of course that clip was right. So let's see. So there is a keeper here that has a purse. I do need to find him at a certain point. Is someone skulking around here? That's him. That's good. Okay. You saw that there were a couple of coin stacks too there.
Uh, let me just check something here. Sometimes I swear they keep it cold in here so we don't fall asleep. Yeah, I think this is right. I think we got the right amount of light now. There's another keeper up here, I think, that has... Now we're on the third floor of the council tower. So there is no map of this. So what we are going to do now is actually jump over to this balcony here that is a little bit hidden. And now we're in the Superior Elder's Suite. Some pieces of loot here, glasses, and a watch. A couple of readables as well. Superior Elder Nathaniel, be advised that Translator Gamal is set to arrive in First Keeper's Watch in two days. Her mission is of the utmost importance. A new prophecy requires her to search your archives for a few scriptures and tomes. Assist her as much as thoroughly as you, as much and as thoroughly as you can. Signed, First Keeper Xavier. So, Translator Gamal, I wasn't aware of until I played this mission the first time, but she is um, apparently from Thief Three, and we will see her later on, and uh, she is quite something. This is the Superior Elder's key. We do not need that. Um, but we can take it. Then there's another readable here. Elder Nathaniel, it is with the deepest regret that I must bring you this news. Twice now I've missed the report from Acolyte Jeremiah, our agent at Suchime Heights. I was thus forced to contact him personally. Arriving at the store, I found the portcullis sealed shut, so I had to compromise myself and enter through the nearby smithy. Inside, the secret entrance was completely exposed, and the empty shop smelled worse than rotten fish. Down below, my worries were confirmed. Acolyte Jeremiah was hanging from the ceiling. He tried to tell us that this assignment was a burden too hard to bear. My condolences and best of luck on finding a replacement agent. Interesting. Then up here... There's a blue or purple vase. This is one of the main doors. This is an empty area, but you can get up here with the rope arrow. Uh, and this is, I believe, uh, this is from the Hall of Glass, I think. Not a hundred percent, but I think so. Right. And in here, it's a tiara, 2142.
Yes. And then there is a ring key that we're going to need. Sorry, I'm just checking my list here because I took some loot out of order. And now we're going to get some new objectives. I know who you are, why you are here, and what you are looking for. Our ancient organization has three goals. To observe from afar, to store knowledge, and to preserve the balance. The statuette you touched has made you sensitive to subtle magic, able to see our glyphs in ourselves. The gem around your neck is imbued with such magic. It belonged to one of us. I bear no grudge for this old theft, but I demand you keep our existence an absolute secret. A few of us are aware of the prophecy about you. To keep things simple, interpreter Kaduka can read the future <coughs> through glyphs and translator Gamal delivers her prophecies to us. Through them, I knew you would come and I knew you would read these words. We possess a tome that will clarify your predicament. Young acolytes can be nosy or succumb to temptation. <clears throat> and so this profane text is sequestered in our restricted library. The ring key provided with this missive will allow you to access it. The book is entitled Azran the Cruel, Necromancy, the Black Parade, and its Schism from the Hand Brotherhood. Take it and read it carefully, <clears throat> as it will come to retrieve it in a few days. I trust the book will contain all the information you need. There's another item you require, a harp inlaid with amethysts. The one you were supposed to steal from ha Howtree Manor, as a matter of fact. It was recovered by our agents decades ago and is now concealed in a reliquary at the top of the North Tower for study. Your former master did not know where it was, nor does he understand its true purpose. This too is explained by the book. While I know the outcome of our, your ordeal, I'm afraid I cannot divulge the way it ends, as we, all we can do now is wait and observe. This guy's giving the creeps. That rings the best chance I have. Now to get into the restricted library. So we checked off finding out what this place is, and we got this one. Break into the restricted library and find the book Azeron the Cruel Necromancy in the Black Parade and its schism from the Hand Brotherhood, and recover that harp inlaid with Amethyst for real this time. Interesting. Okay. Um, this is empty. Alright, so that's what we have to do now. Here's the other entrance to this room. Oh, they can't spot us from a distance here. Another real save. Whose infatigable idea was it to place the top? Oh, that was a quite clever move, actually, and I'm kind of almost offended that I got caught there. Sixty-seven silver candlestick. So we're now in the north west area. Oh, he will definitely see us. where we took the candlesticks. 
No, the coin stacks behind the statue. Alright. <clears throat> Silver candlestick. south of the scriptorium, actually. Readable here. History of Jalambo, Codex Volume uh, 57. <clears throat> Located far to the south beyond the arid wastes, the kingdom of Jalambo draws to, the, to it the travelers and merchants with its wealth and power. The oldest trace of the kingdom dates back to 2, 215. The territory was inhabited by many no nomad tribes fighting for control of land and water. In 250, the war chief Munsa al Rahman, the first, the wise from the Janya tribe, managed to take control of the great lake Yeremaya and started building the first city of Jalambo, uh, Munsuduba, which became its capital. The Janya territory officially became the Jalambo kingdom in 252 after the union of Munsa al Rahman's son, Megan al Rahman, and Keita Hazm, ruler of the Jalambo nomads who had the rest of the territory under their control. Jalambo was discovered in 349 by merchants from Blackbrook, who lost their way to, in the southern desert. Upon returning to their home city, they brought with them an impressive amount of silk and spice. They spoke of a mysterious land with towns built of red stone and numerous sculptures made of pure gold. At first brushed off as a mere tale, the existence of the kingdom was confirmed when a caravan from the south reached Roxburgh with a vast amount of gold said to have ruined the value of coin for five years. In modern times, Jalambo's relations with outsiders are entirely limited to trade. The Jalambi's economy is primarily based on the export of gold, jewels, and spices, but also ornamental weapons from the forges of uh, Jol Jolgeo. Despite Jalambo's nomadic origins, no hostility ever is ever observed. this. I just wanted to make sure that they didn't hear that clunk, because if they do, they don't alert, but they stand up. 2242, purple vase, we're on track here. I think maybe there's somebody coming in here occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> Speak of the devil. here. Also a silver candlestick here. Those are the books that sometimes are missed. The ones that are sort of embedded in the... The bookshelves. This one. Bright Cobble, From Prosperity to Poverty. As with the... Or as with other oldest part of the city, Bright Cobble was initially limited to just a few buildings. Among them a Hammerite church next to an underground source of fresh water known as uh, Leith Source. Leith Source, yeah. Due to its proximity to a water source, the villas quickly gained interest for the richest families of the time, who wished to absorb it into the city, extending their vast plantations. A union was formed, and in the place of fields, there were soon textile workshops and vast mansions. The golden age of bright cobble began during the pre-industrial era, when the first electric lampposts were created and installed at its marketplace. 
giving the district its name. The new technology signaled a start to the period known as the Noisy Times, during which the rich families inhabiting Bright Cobble tried to display as much machinery as possible to gain power and respect in society. Owning a mansion equipped with as much machinery as possible was considered a sign of a successful family. The end of the Golden Age was marked by a blaze at the first workerless factory, after a thunderbolt struck one of its collectors. With this event becoming known as the first fire caused by a machine, the opinion of the elite about electricity shifted, and soon most inhabitants moved to other quarters in fear, returning to simple and archaic technologies, such as torches and manual work. Abandoned or sold, the former prestigious buildings of the district were given the name Whistlers, referring to their old squeaking gears, and mostly converted into factories or cheap tenements. This is all that remains of Bright Cobble's former glory. So, the whistling of the gears, maybe, by Fire Mage. Is that a very, very light reference there? I wonder what the interpreter meant by this. What do they think they're accomplishing? Is he coming in here? have a Another man with a purse here. There he is. How convenient. Thank you guys for showing up when I need you. Who's that? I did not know that he went in there. I cannot believe the incompetence on display. Spilling ink on such an ancient text. Simply unforgivable. Alright, so now we're in the southwest. We've sort of made a loop around here. So we're going to read a book in here, but we are going to head west next into the south tower. Who's that? the study of primitive civilizations of yore and why one of them was better than the others by Lord Clive M. Brascombe. Kulib was far from making all its economical possibilities a reality. Indeed, it was far too isolationist for that. It was socially too weakened by its excess production for the god kings, dead made gods or greater gods. It was economically slowed down by the hoarding of precious metals in its temples, which resulted in a lack of intensive circulation. Therefore, in this isolationism, it is highly probable that the Kulibian civilization was highly developed, but did not find any partner for equal trade. The Kulibians, convinced of their superiority, were long prejudiced against foreigners and stayed close to their ancestral traditions, which may explain their desire to isolate themselves. It is also important to note that Kulib's power and the power of its administration was so important that even when it ceased to be a creative power and to represent a living civilization, it was still standing and maintained by its last administrative officials. There's someone skulking around here. He turned around immediately. This is what your life is going to. Who's that? Alright, that we're just gonna have to wait. 
I think we're done in the council chamber now. Compilation of court readings and verdicts of the city, volume 19, 1612. True bill. At Green Bay, John Askham Dockwork publicly uttered these words: "The Baron is dead, and the city council is hiding it from us in disregard of the acts against sacrimongering, scaremongering, and against spreading false rumors concerning the Baron." The judgment of the court delivered that the said John Askham shall be put in the pillory on Payblock Plaza shall pay a fine of 10 gold coins each to each member of the city council. 2612. True bill. At South Quarter, Damien Diebelman, Fagetter, assaulted um, Timmy Kredge and murdered him by giving him divers mortal wounds um, with a dagger, of which wounds he then and there died instantly, and that having so murdered him, the said Damien Diebelman tried to burn the body of the same Timmy Kredge into his chimney. The judgment of the court delivered that the said Damien Debelman shall be sentenced to be hung by the neck until dead. 3612. True bill. At Eastport, Martha Howley, wet nurse, stole four statuettes for a value of 15d from uh, Lord Gervasius. The judgment of the court delivered that the said Martha Howley shall be sentenced to walk through the Baron's Way, attended by a lawman, and there a board hung around her neck with the word thief, printed thereon in large characters. Devils. What the title? Okay. Let's go in here, and we're now in sort of the, the guest chamber area. Let's go on this one. Be a ring in here. And in this should be a letter. In response to your previous message, I do not like the way th third keeper Orland aggressively eyes the position of first keeper. Xavier is old and at the end of his days, while Theobald is feeble and weak, put in his position through shameful nepotism. Orland is the most capable to succeed Xavier, should Theobald concede but I do not think Orlan has what it takes to truly rule the order. He is far too bureaucratic and narrow-minded for that, while we need a person of conviction and wisdom. The man is too controlling and is thoroughly obsessed with Garrett, but not in the right way. You know it more than anyone, eh? I truly trust in your judgment regarding our young and skilled friend, and like you, I do believe he shall eventually return to us, especially with regards to his upcoming tribulations. Mercedes is a lost cause, but not him. Far from it. Orlan does not share the sentiment and would rather have the man hanged and quartered than put his trust into him, even if his very life depended on it. I would like to be proved wrong, but alas, I fear I am right. Here's a water arrow in this one. Let's see. Now this is guest chambers that we have to pick. I don't think there's anyone in there. Love the ambiance in here. Here's a medallion, 2480, and there's a letter. A letter to the translator. Most esteemed translator, I am again so very honored and humbled to receive your illustrious person within the halls of First Keeper's Watch. You already know it, but I grant you free access to all the books we possess in our archives, including the rare and potentially dangerous volumes found within the restricted library. 
I will provide a ring key to the restricted library when we meet in my office, which is found at the top of the central library. A fellow keeper shall be posted at the entrance, should you need assistance in your quest. Yours and knowledge, Superior Elder Nathaniel of First Keeper's Watch. Alright. There's nothing else in here. Understand. The unwritten times are coming. Sorry. Ooh. He actually hears that. Look again. Ah, can't find anything in here. This is where we came out earlier. I need to use his patrol to open the door so that I don't have to pick it myself. <clears throat> Don't want to touch that because then he hears it. Hmm. There's a spirit. Potion I wonder what the interpreter meant by this. And a flash bomb behind this banner. Mm -hmm. All right. Can you just leave, please? Mm -hmm. that book again. Ah, I thought he had find anything in here. I thought he had like a set uh, three stations that he went to, but I guess he doesn't. safe here. I don't really know. Hmm. I wonder what the interpreter meant by this. here. Okay, I get I'm getting massive slowdowns. I'm going to have to... Okay, now it got fixed. candlestick. And back here there are two coin stacks very well hidden. I don't think this has anything. But there is a book here that we can read. Compendium of Evidence Providing Carathin's Existence, Volume 11. Often referred to as the Lost City, Carathin is said to have existed many centuries before our time. The large booming city is mentioned in numerous myths or legends, but what is the actual evidence of its existence? In 367, a group of grease hands were sent into high town sewers to fix a clogged pump and discovered a chunk of sandstone stuck inside, a type of stone that has not been seen in the quarries around the city for centuries. 
Ten years later, a gardener was arrested by the police with a pure sapphire she's said to have found in a well in downtown. The marks on the stone seem to conform with the methods used in Carathin's times to clean and cut jewels. While the discovery of minerals dating back to ancient times could be interpreted as a coincidence, the existence of cultural remains is, however, more pertinent. In 401, a fishing boat caught into its net an ancient statue representing a cray-like entity near Markham's Island, corresponding with the description of an ancient god worshipped in Carathin. And in 409, a fishmonger discovered a few bronze coin rings bearing unknown marks inside the fish she was hollowing out. The marks looked similar to hier hieroglyphs, the alphabet used by the precursors according to the tablet of the ancients displayed in the High Watch Museum. Not only does this information prove that Carathin should have existed, but it also indicates that it was located much closer to the city than expected. Alrighty, so now we are done in the South Tower. We're gonna head, this room here is completely empty. It's open and uh, empty, There's a, it's a bedroom without anything. We're gonna head through here now, this is a little bit difficult. Uh, however, we don't really need to go into this region much because um, we've already gone to this uh, Master Librarian's area, so we just have to get through here into this staircase to the north. Power of Entrustment. That's where we're... Oh, yeah. This takes you back down to the dormitories. I'm a little bit unsure... here. I thought there was a book here. Yeah, there it is. The Old Quarter Catastrophe and Assorted Documents and Observations by Keeper Feltmus. The Cataclysm is said to be a major example of an unresolved Dark Age and its consequences on our order and society. Misinterpretation of the signs not only forced our order to reveal its existence to the Hammerites, but also drew too much attention from foreign powers such as the Han Brotherhood. The reason behind the catastrophe is still undetermined, but it clearly originated in the Builder's Cathedral where one of the most powerful sentients once sealed. 
The many letters exchanged between the Smith in exile and the Council makes one wonder whether someone within the that place tried performing forbidden rituals without considering the consequences of their actions. At first, the catastrophe was kept secret, simply referred to as arson by the Hammerites and the police. Only on the fourth day did the public begin to suspect that the fire is much more insidious than the officials claimed. But despite there being rumors and even first-hand witness accounts, due to the denial and incredulity of the high-ranked population, action was taken too late, resulting in a hurried evacuation and deaths. Not only had the event greatly increased social tensions between the upper and lower classes, leading to a bloody riot on the Old Quarter, but it also had a devastating effect on the city's economy. The loss of the Mercantile Quarter, which specialized in bakery and ironwork, led to a massive shortage of bread and swords. In conclusion, the Old Quarter catastrophe is an example of a Dark Ages, consequences and the importance of our work. So that's an interesting readable, I think. We are now heading actually to the Reliquary. So we've now gone up to this ledge, and here, and this is the same staircase as you see here on the first floor. to the reliquary we have to pick that nobody goes in there not a readable here you got some interesting items here's the amethyst harp it's unstrung off that objective. So then we really only have to get that readable now. Alright, so what we have to do now, there's a secret here. There's a glyph up there. Tower area. Twenty-seven twelve. These old books look so weird. Like they're made of human flesh. And to get this rope. I typically do this. Somebody was running. <coughs> Nobody said anything, and how on earth could I have gotten spotted here? Hmm. I wonder what the interpreter meant by this. A 
That is so weird. Did you guys hear that? So strange. It sounded like somebody was sprinting, but nobody said anything, and I don't really see how I could... I was not making any noise here. Sometimes I swear they keep it cold in here so we don't fall asleep. That is so odd. I'm a lackwit. Of course that glyph was right. Because even up here... Let me just check. Sometimes I swear they so we don't fall asleep. Even up here I'm actually dark. <sighs> so I'm a little bit lit up there, but they wouldn't third alert to an alarm by seeing that they would give a first alert rather I don't know maybe that's mm -hmm. something to do with um, mm -hmm. with the secret I went to I'm not sure I didn't make any noise in there either I'm puzzled Alright, so now we have to go back, and we have to hit these couple of rooms in the north here. They don't understand. No, they don't understand. The unwritten times are coming. doesn't belong here. Oh, I didn't know he was there. Hey. Okay. Tough area this, I guess. This is where we were, up there. <coughs> Excuse me, fellow. Do you know where I can find Drax? I think he was talking. I think he actually talked to. Um, <coughs> hey, I can. S what on earth? The Glyph Warden was upset today. Maybe it was one of those librarians that I heard about. I'm not sure. <coughs> Who's that? I was a dark watch. It sounds when they are walking like they're running, because they have a little bit of a different.
All right, we're going to read a couple of things in here. Sometimes I swear they keep it cold in here so we don't fall asleep. You have too much left. What Lies Beyond the Great Ice Wastes by William Wecrying Esquire, printed by the most worshipful company of the New Market Printers, Anno 790, The City. North of the dreaded area known as the Farthest North lie the Great Ice Wastes, also called Shadowlands, or more pompously, the not yet known Land of the North. These lands are an endless desert of nothingness, snow and freezing blizzards, where no agriculture is possible and the soil is as hard as iron and the icy cold wind is akin to daggers of frost. Several expeditions were made in the ancient days with the noble purpose of mapping the expanse, but these lands are so hard to navigate in and the environment so harsh that the few explorers who returned left us with rough tales of what they could only guess lied beyond. The cartographers of yore did not give this area a name, they only referred to it using the phrase uh, Hic Sunt Monstrosus Bestia. Um, and that's what it says, Hic Sant Monstrosus Bestia, here be monstrous beasts, which could probably be true considering the numerous fantastical tales of woolly elephants or giant sea serpents described by seafarers. One such story struck me with primal fear, which I will narrate in detail much later in these pages. However, the humble author of this book urges readers not to simply reject this story as a simple sailor superstition or a rambling madman's tale as I have good reasons to believe that the man was telling the truth with his bone-chilling report of frozen cyclopean t cities, grotesque monoliths, and nameless monstrosities that dwell, that dwell in hidden crevices. And there's an addi additional note here. Even if the tale narrated by this author of this book is nothing but a fraction of the immemorial origins of the great ice wastes, an order issued by the High Council was to burn a few pages of this book for the sake of sanity. These few words must suffice. Keep her moral. I can't find anything in here. Let's read this. Power balance in dark mo smoke. Dark smoke has seen power struggles ever since its cre creation centuries ago. Initially a trading post for coal, it soon started developing into a berg that housed the miners toiling in the dark galleries and quarries of the Eroval mountain range. Growing at a rapid rate, the burg eventually became its own town and was officially recognized as a quarter of the city. This fast expansion did not stop, and it was soon faced with the conundrum. Indeed, many mine owners, as well as factory owners and merchants princes, were in open conflict between each other and the city council. While most of this conflict was economical in nature, several massacres were committed, no doubt inspired by the countless civil wars Siric has known throughout its long history. Dark smoke nobility eventually mellowed with time, and the once prosperous quarter is now mostly comprised of disused factories, haunted mines, and a few active refineries. Is this a joke? Not only is this essay far too short, but it's also riddled with inaccuracies and fantasy. This book should either be revised or re rewritten, rewritten by someone competent, Elder Cresmo. Uh, that book doesn't belong here. Okay, so now we are moving away from the North Tower into the dining room of the Elders. Someone's skulking around. Someone is skulking around. <clears throat> I like this light. Three 
2020. There's also a fire arrow in the fireplace, and there's some grapes on the floor on the table. There's a fire arrow, no, sorry, a water arrow in the bath here. There's one piece of loot too, where he is. Whose incredible idea was it to build a bookcase so tall? The last piece of loot I found in the mission, actually, I just overlooked it on my first playthrough. We're now going to head southeast, and we're going to listen in on a conversation here, and then we're almost done, and we'll head up to the restricted library. I'll show you this area down here, too. Huh? Huh. The glyph warden was upset today. This month. What is going on? This is very troubling indeed. Which one is it this time? Collected observations Where on is the that book Brother, again? Volume ah, 16. Can't find and the anything in here. This registry states it hasn't been borrowed for many years, but it's gone, vanished. Hmm. Yet another book on the Hand Brotherhood disappearing. This cannot be a coincidence. Something is amiss. I've also heard reports about disappearing books in our stone market compound. This must be submitted for an investigation now. Don't fret, Acolyte. I shall talk to the Elder about that as soon as possible. We must protect our knowledge, after all. Hmm. I wonder what the interpreter meant by this. Let's read this. Observation on the City Wardens, Anno 820. The year 820 was particularly bloody, and the power balance between the crime overlords of the city was at its most fragile. Duval was already well established in North Quarter and Shalebridge, but his sudden takeover of Newmarket in Pampanosis led to an all out street war with Sterling Warden of Newmarket, <coughs> downtown and South Quarter at the time. The Baron's police and the Order of the Hammer were powerless before such uninhibited gang violence. Indeed, it was not a rare sight to witness mobs of thugs and rogues fight each other to the death in marketplaces or alleyways. Sterling had secured an alliance with Ramirez, warden of Hightown, a few years back, but the latter had already betrayed him by Furtivore, sensing a turn of the tide, and had been supplying reinforcements and equipment to Dewall in secret. This conflict lasted until Vinificus, when Dewall definitely took over the Sterling territory, had him executed and gave South Quarter and downtown to Ramirez, establishing him as the second most powerful warden after Dewall. Another less bloody but equally important conflict happened in Recidivus between Lord Mayor Hegemon, Broderick, and the short lived Wayton, warden of Stone Market and Lower Locks at the time. The young but ill tempered crime lord has been warden for only four months, having assassinated the previous warden, Leonid Broderick brother to the Lord Mayor in his sleep. Widely unpopular among his men and subordinates for such a treacherous act, they quickly secured a secret alliance with the Lord Mayor, who was not particularly versed in crime, but still had ties with other wardens, thanks to his late brother, and had Wayden gruesomely assassinated in broad daylight. Some say a beast slew him, but a more plausible explanation is a group of thugs brutally murdered him. In any case, reports indicate that the Baron's police did not intervene during this event, and the Hammerites were reportedly strangely absent. Broderick's reign, however, turned out to be as equally short-lived as Wayden's. The wealthy, ambitious, and strategic Webster bought off Broderick, Broderick's men and took over his entire territory by the end of the year without any bloodshed. Keepers keeping things from keepers. <laughs> what a drollery. That's an interesting readable as well, and it corroborates quite a bit of the events in the Dark Project, of course. Is 
is a readable down here. We're now in the Blue Flame Tower. There. Indeed, the Hamrite Order quickly began to venture past the settlement they built, and that became the cities we are familiar with today, and venture deeper into the dark forest and high mountains in the heartland. Quickly they found themselves surrounded by the unruly and chaotic woodlands, roamed by all manners of woodsy beasts and spirits, and wanting to reach their brethren living in other cities, towns and villages across the land without having to battle their foes every time, started bringing in cobblestones and pavement. These simple dirt roads were overhauled a few decades later under the supervision of High Priest Mauricio, who was appointed Master Architect of the Hamrite Roads. The Hamrite Order began the arduous task of building more robust roads that could be driven on by carts, chariots, or carriages, and that would be patrolled by paladins of the Order day and night, with several outposts built along the roads. After the first modern road was completed, linking the city to Blackbrook, both the Emperor and the Superior Cardinal Gregorius ordered the construction of more Hammerite roads that would link all major Imperial cities and towns. Soon Cyric, Bonn, and Roxburgh had their own Hammerite roads, which uh, greatly facilitated travel between cities, which were much safer than their counterparts of yore. Mauricio, upon his death, was canonized and is now the patron saint of Rhodes, with the cathedral dedicated to his endeavor located in the exact middle point of the road between the city and Blackbrook. All right, so we now moved into the blue flame tower. There's nothing on the bottom floor here, but I wanted to catch that readable. These old books look so weird. Like they're made of human flesh? Alright, let me show you now. So this is above um, the central library below. So here are the two doors to the superior elder. Here's the door into the master librarians. Sometimes I swear so this is quite annoying to have to patrol through here with all these. Of course, that glyph was right. Hey. Yeah, I didn't know he stopped there. Sometimes I swear they keep it cold in here so we don't fall asleep. <laughs> you went. How did you get? What are you doing here, intruder? Oh wow. Sometimes I swear they keep it cold in here so we don't fall asleep. Step out. Wow. <clears throat> Let's go this way. This is the elder offices, and there's three entrances to it. Here's a book. On the matter of Lady de Jorwat's letters, a thesis by Keeper Leopold. In 708, however, Cuthel Printing Company published what they claimed were letters of the very secret of Lady Eustatia de Jorwat. Lady de Jorwat was well known for suffering from the falling sickness, hence her seclusion within her mansion. However, the letters recorded an entirely different person. During the Black Fog of 687, when she was still a young girl, Lady de Jorwat was inducted into the mysteries of the Honeymaker Beast paganic cult created by her ancestresses. The letter con letters continued with her growing role as a member of this cult until she was in command of a vast network of witches' covens all over the city. Naturally, the publishing of these letters was not seen as a positive thing. The Hamrite clergy denounced them as blasphemous. Lady the Yarwath herself refuted them, and the company who published them is issued a retraction. The letters were dismissed as a foul calumny. The public was all too eager to believe the story of the letters 
were but a gross vilification designed to ruin the crippled lady's name. Certainly the shame was enough to make many members of her family abandon her, journeying to Broxburg to leave her their past behind. Lady the Yarwath herself remained confined to her manor until her death two decades later. In truth, the letters were completely genuine. Lady de Yarwath's illness came not from consanguinity, uh, but from taking strong hallucinogenic mushrooms, and many of the rituals described within were authentic, ignoble religious ceremonies which were too dangerous to describe, in addition to having been contaminated with materials provided, providing a rudimentary hint about our existence. Fortunately, few records of the letters remain. The Guildsmen Riots of 709 and the Great Book Burnings of 716 that followed resulted in many copies being destroyed, and the Cuthel Printing Company only had a single copy left when Keeper Gale managed to secure it from their guild house at Duskmoor. By now, Keeper Sapiris estimated that only three copies are known to remain, but they pose no threat as they are now locked in private libraries owned by reclusive lords. Wow. Consanguinity means descending from the same ancestor. Here is a silver candlestick, 3095, and a letter. Hoster, please prepare the vacant guest room to receive translator Gamal. She is not to be disturbed under any circumstances when she's in her quarters. Make sure the nearby hall is dead silent as well. I do not wish to provoke the first keeper's ire. Nathaniel. Okay. Interesting. That is everything we can do in the Sanctuary until we go to the Restricted Library. Don't think I've ever read as much in a short amount of time, at least not out loud. Okay, now we can head up to this... Will you stop making no... Ooh. Where is that book again? There is a patroller there. I'm a little fed up with the way the superior elder looks down. He us. should come down, I think. <laughs> what a title. library so here we need the ring key restricted library no acolytes allowed beyond this point let's just make another real save here just to be sure okay so this is the restricted library there are some readables here as well here on the choice of the dark watch site dark watch sanctuary was founded in 722 in the then industrial district with the purpose of breaking the secret of the impassable gates in the south grotto speculations abound with regards to what is found beyond this mysterious gates. As a strong magic presence can be felt, but in a hundred years, none has been able to break the seals. It is theorized by Superior Elder Silvis, currently the head of Dark Watch, that a powerful artifact is needed uh, to un unseal the doors. This artifact is rumored to be the fabled Shilich Amulet, uh, obvious reference to Midnight and Merkbell in uh, Calendra's Legacy, which parts have been scattered to the four winds and have eluded our order for centuries. The location of Darkwatch Sanctuary is also strategically advantageous as the now old industrial district is close to Merkbell. Highwatch and Lampfire Hills. This has allowed our order to observe with great attention the power struggles on the northeast bank and to intervene should be should the balance be broken. The Hammerites of St. Trinets, for instance, have started to quarrel with the Hammer Hill seat and may try a coup. 
must be vigilant if this happens. Keep revenge, Shaw. Let's see. So, uh, St. Trinitz, of course, is the cathedral in Midnight and Mark Bell as well. So definitely a big reference to Calendar's legacy. Here's another one. Codex of Keepers who strayed from our purpose. Any brethren listed here should be found and captured at all costs for the danger they represent. Interpreter Yanti. Misreading a prophecy without any attempt at correction. Responsible for disastrous consequences. Keeper Renewald. Revealing. Has told up to ten individuals about the existence of our organization in a tavern. <laughs> Elder Eldarius, abuse of glyphs, has subjugated an innocent's mind for two years. Scribe Tarxax, dark magic, used to study of the glyphs for destructive purposes. Keeper Olasium, murder, killed Elder Lopus and tried to burn the evidence. Keeper Olstein, betrayal, has stolen several important tomes and fled to Roxburgh. Could he be a spy from the mysterious order? Elder Dan, abuse of glyphs, illegal use of the glyph of youth for sentimental reasons. Scribe Vanson, misappropriation, has stolen a dozen dangerous tomes without authorization for personal interest. Keeper Kidius, betrayal, attempted assassination of third Keeper Orland. Keeper Jonas, revealing, sent secret messages to the wrong address for five years, denies his mistake. Keeper Mercedes, misappropriation, used Keeper training for personal interest, such as thievery, blackmail, and other crimes. Of course, that's the, our contact in the calendar missions as well. the book, A Compendium of Sentience. Herein you shall find the list of the known sentience. They are classified into two different categories, sentience and lesser sentience. Sentience, also known as artifacts, soul stones or relics, a grouping of five objects possessing special powers and what is thought to be a consciousness normally only associated with living entities, presumably created as part of an ancient safeguard against the forces of evil. Examples include the heart and the chalice, also called the builder's cup by the Hammerites, Efforts to confine all the sentients to one place for study have failed. How and when they came into existence is not known. Recommend further study. Five sentients are known to be located in and around the city. They are the aforementioned heart, currently exhibited in the Wheelstrom Museum. The aforementioned chalice, currently kept by the Hamrites in St. Edgar's Cathedral. The eye, currently sealed within the Old Quarter Cathedral. The Jacknall's Paw, currently in the possession of the Dryads of Wickwood. Uh, Gruliac's Crown, whereabouts unknown but thought to be located close to Kareth Din. If there are any references here that you guys know about that I don't, St. Edgar's Cathedral sounds very familiar. Um, it should be noted that these are likely not the only sentients or higher sentients as they should be described more accurately in existence. Several other sentients have been theorized to exist according to various texts, both from our time and before, and in many different cultures. Lesser sentients. These sentients also possess a consciousness, but are not as potent as the ones described in the previous passage. Unlike the other sentients, these are more than often the result of magical creation, and were built with a specific purpose, ranging from the mundane to the destructive. Examples include, but are not limited to, the Medallion of True Seeing, whereabouts unknown, uh, probably not a reference, but it reminds me of the ultraviolet ruby-lensed eye of true seeing, also from the Calendar missions. Asteridge's Chimes, currently in the possession of Lady Seibel. That's a fan mission, I think. Seibel, that's in, in the title of a fan mission that I don't think I've played. Kara's Drag, hey hey, whereabouts unknown? No, this item being ascensioned is doubtful at best. Hulik's Mask, currently kept in First Keeper's Watch. Let's see if Gamal comes here. Let's see. Is it readable? The Fidrix Hollow Sanctuary Catastrophe. Recent reports indicate that after a thorough examination of the written documents of that time by Elder Hainus, 
and Elder Petros. The catastrophe which flooded and buried our sanctuary in Fidwick's Hollow in 723 was in fact correctly prophesied by interpreter Yanthi. It appears translator Eudora made a mistake in her translation during interpreter Yanthi's last prophecy, stating that the tremors were in fact not a danger when they absolutely were. Notes found in a concealed alcove in her quarters a few years ago, in which translator Eudora admitted her mistake, permitted Elder Hanus and Elder Petros to shed some light on this incident. This revealed mistake is more than serious, as it puts into question translator Eudora's other translations and capacities as a translator. Was this her only mistake? Did she commit more during her time? Moreover, interpreter Yanthi's name was slandered. She was removed from her position and unjustly tried with no means of defense after the sanctuary was suddenly lost to the cave-ins and subsequently flooded. The two elders believe that with this new information, First Keeper Xavier should hold a pardon ceremony and clear interpreter Yanthi's good name. Let's see. I'm getting a really strange oh, vibe from that. Oh, there area. you are. <laughs> <laughs> Statues also come alive okay, afterwards. Really strange vibe from that oh, girl. there you are. <laughs> ah, whoa. All right, let's listen to this. We don't have any. There we go. See how long we can survive here, I guess. enough playtime. I just love it. Love it so much. The first time these statues came alive and I heard them from the floor above, it, it, sound design is just absolutely incredible. But they don't come alive until she sees us. Uh, can you? I don't think you can kill her, can you? Let me know if you can kill her or them, the statues. I haven't experimented that much, but... Here we go. Azaran the Cruel, Necromancy, the Black Parade, and the Schism from the Hand Brotherhood. The origins of the Hand Brotherhood are mysterious, to say the least. They are considered a caste outside any jurisdiction in their place of origin in the Far East. They travel the world, establishing sanctums to study various magical phenomena. Two such sanctums are in the Heartland, a complex of towers beyond the city known as the Mage Keep, and another sanctum within the city inside the old High Watch Castle. An Archmage of Yor, Dubige, chose to be interred here. We believe his choice was not at random, and the arrival of Hand Renegade Azaran the Cruel in the city all but confirms this. Azaran, an infamous and ancient mage, is an avid practitioner of necromancy. For this he was exiled from the, his homeland, in the Far East and branded a heretic by the Hand Brotherhood. Due to both his interest in necromancy and his desire for revenge against his homeland, Azaran gained following, 
gained a following that coalesced into a rogue mage enclave, the Black Parade. The Hand Brotherhood uh, anathematized this group around or circa 827. Why did Azaran seek out the Heartland in the city? With the acquisition of a rare extract taken from the lost anti-necromantic mage polemic Abuktiar's tablets, we have a reasonable answer. Most of the obscure incantations and odd imagery in our extract is meaningless without the whole text. However, one subject of great concern recurs throughout. There exists a physical source of some awful magic with the power to capture the souls of those who touch it. The sentient object, unnamed and undescribed out of fear, was alleged at the time the tablets were carved to be in the heartland. If this remains true today, it explains Azaran's choice to settle the Black Parade in the city. Such a vessel of souls would provide ample fuel for any necromantic rituals. Fortunately, even our limited extracts contains the central purpose of Abuptiar's tablets to archive the method that the Hand Brotherhood devised to annul necromancy and to travel to the realm where these captured souls reside. The extract speaks of three artifacts that the Hand Brotherhood has enchanted for this purpose. They are as follows. A rectangular ruby, initially sealed in a casket by Archmage Kurak, later retrieved by Tomb Raiders circa 702. After some time in a legal trade, it was acquired by Messer Gustavio Aldrias and earned the title Aldrias's Demise, after he ingested the gem in a fatal effort to conceal it. It resides in his family tomb within the catacombs complex be beneath Stone Market. A signet ring with a sapphire stone in the care of Archmage Theodir, locked away in a large mage mortuary in Hag Hill Forest. From the two unsuccessful expeditions we have sent there to recover Abuptiar's tablets, we know that the Amethyst Harp was crafted as part of a trial for Hand Acolytes to access Theodir's tomb using magical silk strings from a source inside the complex, and have high confidence that the tablets are buried within. A gold amulet worn by Archmage Dubich, Duby, maybe, resting with him in his sepulcher at High Watch Castle. We have failed to learn the purpose of this relic, and it may even be purely ceremonial. Many questions remain. Can this sentient vessel be destroyed? If so, would this trap the souls within forever? Did the Hand Brotherhood devise their method to enter this realm of souls in the hope of rescuing them? Has such endeavor been attempted before? Without the original tablets, we cannot begin to guess. We are unsure whether the tablets even hold this information. In secret, we have investigated the archives of the Hand Brotherhood for answers, or a complete copy of the tablets, but we have found no trace of them. Necromancy has been a forbidden dark art for so long among the Hand Brotherhood, there is a chance that knowledge of this necromancy safeguard has been lost among their members, leaving them with no way of dealing with Azaran and the Black Parade should they ever locate and use the sentient Vessel of Souls. So, the Hand Brotherhood wants to destroy these necromancers. I know that bastard Dewal has Aldrea's demise, and the Brotherhood already has the amulet. If I get that ring, too, they'd have everything they need to stop Azaran. And if they succeed, would that remove this curse? Okay. So, that completed that objective. find a way out. And that we can do by just continuing up. Okay, there should be two readables here. Are we powerless against the coming unwritten times? By Elder Drake, an age of confusion and uncertainty. These are the words chosen by interpreters when prophecies concern the unwritten times, and many other keepers who fear this period, said to occur after the Third Dark Age. But is there nothing we can do to stop it? The first thing to keep in mind is how our order gathers information about the future, by reading books from the ancient times, or watch for signs from the glyphs with the help of interpreters. Since the unwritten times have to do with the lack of compass for the future, we could suppose it being either the destruction of our libraries or the death of all interpreters. Some also suspect the disappearance of all glyphs, or even the end of the world, but all these outcomes feel more like the result of a dark age. This raises a question. Are the unwritten times a consequence of the Third Dark Age, or a means to prevent it? An answer would certainly be found by understanding the Brethren and Betrayer Prophecy. 
However, no matter the origin of the unwritten times, the interpreters are unequivocal. The order has to prepare for it and protect its knowledge by copying down the most important tomes and by placing more focus on retrieving lost prophecies before the unwritten times come. Otherwise, these events could upset the balance kept for centuries and mean an end of the Keeper organization. A record of the use of Tachana's flowers in taming sentience. Tachana's flowers were first discovered circa 320 in the cold caves of the mountains of the Great Essi range by a scholar who was intrigued by the tales and legends sung by the local druids. It took several years of study for the scholar, whose name is forgotten by all, to realize that these flowers in fact possessed magical properties that had strange effects near sentient objects, whether they were created by magic or in the most rare cases were thought to be creatures. One archmage hailing from beyond the great eastern expanse, Sachana Jokobic, had heard stories about these fantastical flowers, and after fruitless experiments, found that they could be used to lull these sentients to sleep and to activate some of their most hidden mechanisms. Her groundbreaking discovery had many repercussions and had, has helped our order understand the nature of the sentients, as well as a majority of their functions. As the years passed, the flowers became known as Tachana's flowers. It should be noted that while Tachana's flowers possess a unique and strong power, not all sentients are equally affected by them. Indeed, the heart seems to enter a blind rage should Tachana's flowers be presented to it, and it has been known to have caused several people to commit suicide by whispering dark thoughts in their minds. Here's the last piece of loot. Silver candlestick 3145. That should be all the loot. And there is one more readable. Before we can leave. That's over here. The Brethren and Betrayer Prophecy. Of all the prophecies our order has known, two are the most worrisome, the unwritten times and the brethren and betrayer. It seems the two are linked. The unwritten times seems to be the third dark age, and which most likely have far greater ramifications than both the dark project and the metal age. Not only is the outcome unknown to us, but we cannot tell whether when exactly this would occur. This book, however, will concentrate on the brethren and the betrayer prophecy. Very little is known about this prophecy yet, as the, as the glyphs have not revealed much. Interpreter Kaduka does not receive much in the way of knowledge as far as it, can, it is concerned, but what we know so far could potentially help us understand what we are facing and take action in due time. The glyphs seem to indicate that the Brethren and Betrayer would play a major role in the coming of the Unwritten Times. The Brethren and Betrayer would be someone among our ranks who would enshroud themselves in absolute secrecy and cunning subterfuge thus making it harder for us to detect them. The Brethren and Betrayer would use scheming and conspiracy to divide us. Note, while I appreciate this isn't much to work with, I do believe these pieces of information will come in useful later. More research needs to be done, Elder Sebastian. So is the Brethren and Betrayer then referencing Garrett, since he was a keeper, therefore a brother, but then went his own way, probably. So here we can leave by doing this. We are done. This should close on its own, I think. Indeed. Last real save time. Let's do that. Aye, aye, aye. It's a long mission. But here... <sighs> <sighs> well, it's a little bit more energetic <sighs> because of all the readables, but what am I doing? Oh, yeah. Here. <sighs> We're not energetic, but... Whoa. Takes a little bit more mental work for me to read all this. <sighs> Now we actually come to the astrologers. Here. Nothing to pick up here.
do that, then we can lock it. Is someone there? Oh, that's right. Yet. <sighs> then we can go up and go into our room, can we? There we are! Well, as far as I could tell, that was a successful Perfect Supreme Ghost of Kept Away From You. Of course, I'm sure Chad has picked up on any possible busts, if there were any. Hopefully not. So yeah, that was it. Um, total time, 1 hour, 39 minutes, 33 seconds, 3145 out of 3145 loot. We picked 6 out of 7 pockets. Um, there was probably a key that we didn't pick, right? No, a healing potion. That's right, in the streets. Locks picked five. No backstabs or knockouts, nothing and nobody uh, killed, and no damage dealt taken or healing taken. And we have spent nine hours, 18 minutes, and 12 seconds, and taken 15,624 loot. All right, so um, what do I think about this mission? Pros and cons. Pros, I love the industrial part of the town, especially the factory plaza. Um, so, the ambiance and the feel there is wonderful. I wish there was a whole mission just like that. Um, I think the Keeper Sanctuary looks amazing. Visually, it's very appealing and very distinct. And I freaking love the Restricted Library and the enemies, Kamal and the statues. That is just... Uh, that was such a surprise at the end of the mission, and uh, I couldn't stop playing around with them for the first 20 minutes of finding them. Um, I also really like that the whole mission loops around, and you can get back up to the surface without having to go back through the sewers. That's really nice. Um, I do have some issues with it, though. First of all, I really, like I said, wish there were more places to visit in the streets, but I recognize that due to size constraints you can't do that. I think the public workstation is very confusing, unnecessarily so, almost. But it's a way to, you know, make the sanctuary be more logically hidden down there. You know, if it's already confusing, people won't venture into all the areas too much. Uh, but the, the sanctuary, the keeper hideout, I, I have some problems with gameplay-wise. Uh, I just, like, walked through every room and read everything and picked up everything I could, and then the mission was done pretty much after that. There wasn't any thinking involved on my part, and I kind of missed that. I missed that there was something more in the sanctuary besides just picking up items. Um, I wish there were some puzzles or something like that, or that there was more important information in some of the readables. Maybe something that opened optional areas up or something like that. That I feel there's something missing besides it just looking nice. So um, I have a hard time sort of enjoying the Keeper Sanctuary uh, too much in this mission. And I, I usually need something more than just appearance. Uh, I felt I was just sort of uh, going on autopilot down there and just trying to pick up everything and read everything and and that was it. Uh, that might be a little bit harsh, I'm not sure. And like I mentioned earlier, I really wish this was two separate missions. One just dedicated to the, the Keepers. So I think I'll give this mission a 7.5 out of 10. It's on the, on the lower side so far. Uh, it's probably ending up in my bottom three overall in the campaign. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you loved it, great. Uh, it's sort of... Um, 
hit or miss, I think, if this mission is uh, to your liking or not. Uh, now, the next two missions I'm going to play on this channel are two... Both of them are two Victorian manor missions in, you know, Thief 2 style. The Long Shadow Falls, which is amazing, and Enemy in Patriot, Mission 9, is out of this world uh, a masterpiece, I think. So both of those, if you like Thief 2, that should be right up your alley. Um, and even I, who am not a big Thief 2 fan, you know, I like definitely like Thief uh, 1 better, um, those two missions are still undeniably in the top missions I've ever played. So, very, very good. So, I hope to see you back then. I'm not sure when um, the Long Shadow Falls, which is the next one, will come out. But uh, until that time, thank you guys for joining. And uh, stay safe, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.